It is seriously hot out here. Frame swap fanatics. Oh, that's dumb. Back at it today, uh, hanging the front, getting the fenders on. Well, they're kind of on right now, but getting it all cinched down, working on interior stuff, AC, seat belts, stereo, stuff like that. The home stretch stuff. Uh, that's, that's what we're working on today, so let's get to work on the truck. We've got the AC installed. We've got two louvers there, one there. And one here. The evaporator unit obviously is in. Got all my hoses, duct hoses, routed. And the wiper linkages don't hit or anything. So this is actually an impressive kit. It went in just as easy as they say it does. Uh, the controls are nice. This is the upgraded black anodized controls here. And they're backlit LED. And then just some basic wiring, power wire, and then this goes to the uh, the heater control valve, compressor relay. This is uh, switched power, and then the instrument cluster lights for the dimmer to control the backlit LED on the controls. Blue wire there that goes to the compressor. Pretty simple. I will say, I mean, this was a sure-fit kit. Uh, I think that's what they call it. It's designed for this truck, uh, and everything fit just like just like it was supposed to. Well designed, well designed kit. Upgraded control bezel. I liked it better than just the stock plasticky looking ones. And the fact that their backlit LED will be handy uh, in night driving. It works. Obviously, there's no Freon in the uh, system, and I've left the Compressor unplugged because I don't want that kicking on with no Freon, but just for testing purposes only as Ike would say That works great Moves a ton of air. These are the wires that come through the firewall um, For some reason their grounds are white So that's just a couple of grounds a power and then this is the compressor signal wire it tells the compressor to turn on, which this will get wired into the trinary switch, which is connected to the dryer. And uh, I'll get some better shots of that when I get to there. Basically, the trinary switch will tell the electric fan to kick on when the AC is on. And it'll also kick on if the pressure gets above a certain range uh, in the system to cool everything down. So that gets wired to the trinary switch. And then the, from the trinary switch, it goes to the electric fan and then to the AC compressor. The front fenders and the grill are on. Lights are in. Just finishing up wiring on those. So as far as the gauges go, it really doesn't get much simpler than this. Uh, the gauges go in. And then they've got a little threaded ring that goes around them, secures them in. Then they've got power wires for the lighting, gauge face lighting and uh, ground wires and stuff. And then that all just daisy chains to each other. All the way down and then out. And then you wire it to your keyed ignition. This is the needle power, I believe. Uh, it, same thing, all daisy chains. And then the gauges daisy chain with each other to send info back and forth. Then out of this one, this just plugs into your OBD2 port and you got gauges. Very cool. The only thing it won't have is oil pressure, which you have to do manually like I talked about in a previous video. Um, just put in a sending unit and then you just run this wire to that sending unit. That's the signal wire. You got oil pressure. The fuel gauge. In order to calibrate your fuel gauge, they give you this little button, plugs into the back of the fuel gauge, and then you set your ohm range. You set your ohm range 
by reading this chart, the needle will go to, as you hit the button, whatever ohm range you want. And for us, we want the 16 to 158. That's what Ford uses. And then you'll have fuel level. Doesn't get a lot easier than this when it comes to gauges. Then these are just my turn signal indicators and high beam indicator. The gauges are in and they look good. And it's in diagnostic mode right now, asking me, the uh, fuel gauge is asking me to program it. And that's what we'll do right now. Hold it down to go into programming mode. And it'll, it'll let me know when it goes into programming mode. All right, there it goes. The needle just popped up, tells me we're in programming mode. And each one of these uh, lines here is a different ohm range for popular vehicles. Uh, for Ford passenger cars, for the Crown Vic, uh, it'll be this little line before the full line. So we just hit the button. And right there, hold it down. And it sweeps. And it goes to exactly how much, that's how much fuel I had in the Vic. great. Also the needles light up. It's uh, also backlit. It's very neat how it lights up. Even the uh, logos I had put on there, the V8 logos, even those light up. So I showed you how these are just piggyback to each other. And that's all it is, is all those, you know, they all, it's super simple. They, they all piggyback to each other. And then just the 3.5 millimeter jacks to each one for them to talk to each other. And then all that comes out to this OBD2 uh, plug-in. You just plug it into your OBD2 and then all the gauges work. Uh, but I just went ahead and cut that out and then hardwired it in to the CAN bus, the two wires from the CAN bus. The uh, pink and green and white and green wires. Uh, that's your CAN bus high and low. Just soldered it into that and it works great. And it leaves my OBD2 port open for diagnostics. I also wired up my turn signal indicators. and my high beam indicator. So we're good to go there. Now it's time to address safety. I thought about using the stock Crown Vic seat belts, but I didn't like the red button and they just look too modern. It would kind of throw things off, I think, on the interior. So I went to uh, seatbeltsplus.com and found these kind of old school looking seat belts. I got uh, three over the shoulder since my bench seat, the center has an over the shoulder guide. I'm just going to reuse that. Comes with all the mounting hardware, everything you need. It's got that kind of old, yeah, just that old vintage look to it. Getting the seat belts mocked up, drilling the proper holes and for the anchor points and the shoulder anchor points. It's really not too bad. I just uh, used some welding wire and there's a little slot up there and just kind of slid the thing down. Use the bolt to hold it in place and then put the rivets in. And yep, yeah, that'll work. Now I'm just doing mock up for now because the carpet, I'm going to put the carpet in and then put them in permanently. All right, we got carpet in and trimmed up. And I got power wire. I'll show you what that's for before too long. Then a couple of power wires here. One is going to run under the carpet, then up and in, in between the seats and the arm fold down. I'm going to have a phone charger there. And the other one is for alarm system. I also bed linered the back of the cab right here. A little more sound deadening and protection. For this truck, I wanted uh, music. I wanted a stereo system. Uh, I, you know, I love the sound of a V8, but for long trips and stuff, I gotta have gotta have music. 
Um, so I sourced this kit. This is a kit from Custom Auto Sound. It comes with a powered subwoofer uh, that is designed to go under the seat, which it will. Uh, and then there's these satellite speakers that look like uh, AC vents or something. It's pretty cool. Kind of fits the uh, era of the truck. Uh, and they mount, you know, up in there. Um, there's, I'm not going to be running a head unit. This is, I'm going to use this as a standalone unit. Uh, with this Bluetooth receiver. So basically my phone becomes the head unit. Um, nothing to cut into on the dash. The phone controls the volume. Uh, I got Sirius XM on there. Uh, all my music. What I like most about it, it leaves the dash looking stock. Uh, won't even look like I have a stereo in here. Uh, there's also a sub control, sub level control potentiometer that I can mount underneath the seat as well. Um, the cool thing is it'll just pair as soon as I get in the truck you know, the, uh, it'll Bluetooth pair to the sound system automatically and good to go. So I'm going to run these satellite speakers, install and run them under the carpet. Don't know if I'll get the whole thing installed for this video, but we'll definitely get it going for the next one. It's just before I get the carpet down with uh, all the seat belts and everything, uh, I'd like to run these and get them under the carpet. I also talked about an alarm system, and yes, there's an alarm system going in here. Um, I just I'm not going to show it or talk about what it is or the install. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's just you know I don't want all of the internet knowing exactly what alarm system is in here. And like I said, nothing against my faithful subscribers who I appreciate very much, uh, but I think you'd understand. Got my power wire for the amp run, the two speakers, and then 12 volt power there. Speakers are in. Good. On to seat belts. Well, I got the seat belts in as well as the anchor points for the latches. I'll probably end up putting those in uh, after I put the seat in. I'm not sure I haven't quite decided. Um, I've kind of mocked up the stereo. It sounds great. I'd love to play you something but everything's copyrighted these days. Uh, but it does. It really sounds really good. Um, and here's a little tip for those who may not know. These are wires that I don't need. Um, when you do that and you go to tape them up, cut them at different lengths. Uh, so that way you'll have no chance of anything shorting out. Um, even better would be to do a heat shrink cap and then tape, tape them up. I know a lot of you probably already know that, but for those who don't, that's a good little tip. Uh, I still need to run my dome light. Just haven't tackled that yet. This is my keychain. Uh, the wife and I, when we got married, we got married in Sedona, Arizona. And... Uh, we drove out there, and we drove all, all the way down Route 66 uh, out to Arizona and back. We didn't do the whole route, but um, maybe now with the truck we will. But that's our room key from the uh, Blue Swallow Motel on Route 66. That's a cool place. Iconic, iconic motel. I'd like to take a second and give credit where credit is due, um, and that's uh, to Nathan at Nathan's Garage. I'm sure if you're watching me, you also follow him. Uh, Great guy, great fabricator. Uh, he's the one that really pushed me over the edge to do the Crown Vic thing. I know it's been, people have been doing these Crown Vic F100 swaps all the way back into the 90s. Um, but he was the first one that actually, you know, took an in-depth look at it and what it, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the work behind what's involved in this kind of thing. I mean, I think for a lot of us, this is the mystery of, of doing it can kind of put a hindrance on jumping into something like this. So I'd like to thank Nathan for taking the time to make his videos uh, to really get me to the point where I felt like I could give it a shot. So thank you, Nathan. I think we all really appreciate it. As I've mentioned before, uh, I do have an Instagram account. It's uh, River City Motorbikes. I'm on there giving updates and stuff like that. So come join me there. And as you can see, the truck is really coming together. It's getting so close. Uh, it's, it's getting tough at this point to just not want to just cut some corners and drive it, but I, you know, I, I won't do that because I just have to go back and fix it later. If I'm here, I might as well do it right the first time, you know? Uh, I just looked this morning. I'm almost at uh, 2,000 subscribers. That is unbelievable. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate that. You guys and girls as a community have uh, been awesome. This has been a really neat adventure to do this and upload it and put it on YouTube. And with that said, uh, that's going to do it for me for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.